It's the Memphis Sports Network. WMC Memphis, WMFS HD2 Bartlett Memphis. WMFS FM and HD1 Bartlett, WMFS Memphis. ESPN 790 AM and 92.9 FM ESPN. The views and opinions of the hosts or guests of the following program do not necessarily reflect those of the management or staff of Intercom Memphis. Watch the sun rise, new days going, and it's calling you and me. Where the mighty Mississippi flows by Memphis, Tennessee. We've got woodlands, fields, and water. Hey, there is no better way. You can find. Saturday morning and welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Barton Power Sports, Sportsman's Warehouse, and Best Care Home Services. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. A good Saturday morning. Welcome to Outdoors with Larry Ray as uh, we talk outdoors on this October the 21st. Uh, 90 minutes of the fastest 90 minutes in outdoor radio. It just seemed like, it seemed like the other day, October, we were doing the first Saturday of October. Now here, almost the last Saturday. You don't sound like Frank Barton. Yeah, but yeah. No, you know. <laughs> I'm, 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 How did we sneak Dave Gabbard in here? I mean, where did he come from? You know, you know? I'm Frank today. Call me Frank. Hey, it was to be Frank. <laughs> to be Frank. Yeah, call me Frank. Dave Gabbard is filling in for our good friend Dave, Dave Gabbard. <laughs> Dave Barton. <laughs> yeah, uh, Frank Barton is out at the National Retriever Master Nationals in uh, Palestine, Texas, and we're going to try to hook up with Frank later in I the show. I've been to Palestine, Texas. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. been to Palestine, okay. Arkansas. Yeah, I've yeah, been to Palestine, Arkansas. Yeah, yeah. So he's, well, anyway, so Dave is here. Uh, Gene Smith, uh, we're we're still looking for him. Brother Daryl's wandering around <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Yeah, these guys can't work. Uh, you know, they got to work together here. But we're going to kick it right off because you know, deer season's underway and it officially opened with the archery season, which well, is seems like uh, back in the summer. Yeah, and you know, and, and it's been so warm and everything else. And uh, I checked with uh, my our uh, deer processor that outdoors with Larry Ray is takes my deer. To Stengel Brothers, right there on Highway 64, U.S. 64, near Laconia and uh, Sumrall. And I stopped by and talked to Scott Stengel the other day. We're going to have him on the show uh, probably next in a couple of weeks. But he said he had only processed 28 deer uh, this fall uh, for archery. So we got the man on the line with us right now that can tell us a little bit about what's going on. But also, we want to. Um, Focus on uh, chronic waste disease. Chronic wasting disease. It even sounds scary. It does. It, it is scary. It is scary. And uh, who better to talk about it with? That's um, Daniel Stanfield. He is the uh, Region 1 Big Game and Fur Bear Program Coordinator. And that's a big title. That's one of them big titles. Can't even get it on his shirt. But uh, good morning. <laughs> good morning, Good morning. Dave. How are y'all doing today? Hey, buddy. We're doing great on this October the 21st. And, uh, I know the the, the uh, and Dave will vouch. TWRA is really emphasizing this, and I and I'm really glad that they're doing this about chronic waste disease. Uh, yeah. uh, let's clamp down on it and talk about it for the folks that maybe don't know what it is. Explain that, okay. and then also explain uh, bringing across from a, a deer from out of state coming in here. Uh, right. That's the only way. It's is that the only way it's transmitted? If it if if it comes in contact uh, and that uh, that is probably the only way it's transmitted over a long distance over a long bringing a, an infected animal into an area that's not been infected and we have not been infected but go ahead and tell me a little bit about it 
Well, like I said, to the callers and everybody listening that, that's not aware of it, uh, you know, CWD stands for chronic wasting disease. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Tennessee's stance on it right now is we're still in prevention mode. Prevention we, mode. I think over the last few years, we've tested about 80 uh, free-ranging elk and a, a little under 10,000 deer over the last few years. And God, anybody that's been keeping up with what's going on, you know, Missouri and Arkansas, they've become positive states over the last couple of years. Mm, mm. Um, that's close so what, that's close <laughs> yeah it's right across that river that yeah. river's kind of a barrier right now but uh-huh. you know it's when what people don't know about it it's chronic wasting disease it's, it's a very highly contagious and deadly neurological disease that's uh it's, it's a spongy deterioration of the brain of the infected animals uh and which include all the cervid families such as your white-tailed deer elk moose mule deer black tail red and sitka deer so that's why We've got the new CWD importation ban in effect this year. So your hunters that travel out of state, if they were to harvest a deer, I think there's 22 or 24 states and two provinces in Canada that are CWD states. Wow. If they harvest an animal on one of their fall hunts, they they have, there's some procedures they have to go before they bring that animal back into Tennessee. Is that all? In the, uh, is that in the guide or is that? Uh, it is. It's, okay. it's in the guide. And then also, you know, we still put the guides out, but a lot of people will look for that information on the internet, and it's on our web page as well. Yes, tnwildlife.org, and uh, you can go to that. But uh, let's talk about the transmission. Of, how, how does it? How does one animal get it from another animal? Is that the way it works? How do they? It... They do. It's it's um, this animals that are infected. You know, it, it can be passed from urine. Okay. Uh, through feces, uh-huh. saliva, blood. T- you know, mouth to yeah. mouth contact. Uh-huh. Animals touching each other. But the thing that's really bad about this disease, it's, it's an abnormal protein or a prion, mm-hmm. and it can be shed into the environment, and it can stay active for years in the environment before it really? infects another animal. Wow. That's what's so deadly about it. Well, we're talking to Daniel Stanfield uh, uh, of Region 1, for TWRA, a big game biologist, and, and, and Dave, I know uh, you guys keep up with this when you're out in the field, and you know, like my man checked 28 deer, you know, I guess the processors are, are heavily involved in this, aren't they? I mean, they, they need to they know. They are. If, if somebody brings one in, uh, I don't know what's, uh, you know, I know there's enforcement in this. Uh, I got a ringing in my ear. You know, there's enforcement <laughs> going, there is enforcement going in this too, I know, because not only is Daniel checking to see, that we want this, that doesn't want this to happen. Well, we got Brian Thompson, Major, Major Brian Thompson, on with us this morning uh, to join in on this conversation with Daniel Stanfield. And uh, first of all, good morning, uh, Brian. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday morning. And uh, no problem. Good morning. Let's talk a little bit. We talked to Daniel about uh, CWD, and you, from the law enforcement standpoint, uh, what are you guys doing in the field? Well. You know, we even try to encourage everybody, let everybody know, you can't bring deer in from states that have CWD already. Uh, we've got two bordering states on us in the west part of the state. Uh, Arkansas and Missouri yeah. both have CWD uh, in their state. So anybody brings in a deer into the state of Tennessee from Arkansas and Missouri, even if it's over at West Memphis or across Roswell, uh, it's got to be deboned to meet all the regulations requirements of uh of a CWD state that, uh, that they cannot bring anything in. It's got bones, skull, uh, skull caps got to be clean, teeth got to be clean, all that good stuff. So huh. uh, uh, if we do run across one, we confiscate it, uh, issue citations, and uh, then it'll be destroyed. So you do it, 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 you do issue citations for this and uh yes we do uh, and yes, I, we do. I, and because i know some people say well i'm still going this is my trophy type mm-hmm. thing and uh yeah. but if they take it to a taxidermist or anything like that they've got to and and it's a domino effect here you you know if you most of them i guess they process how, I, how do they know they've got one it's uh got cwd okay. Well, if taxidermist, if if they if when somebody brings the taxidermist a, a, a deer or elk or whatever, then you know they've got to keep records of where it comes from, that type of thing. Wow. You know, or, uh, so if they say it come from uh, Arkansas, come from Missouri, it come from uh, uh, Colorado, wherever that's that's a CWD state, then then that as soon as they tell them where it's from, they know immediately. So 
Uh, and the, the thing about it is we just don't want CWD to get in our state. Uh, and, and we're trying everything to prevent it. We're letting people know, give them headed. They can go kill their deer some other place and bring it back. But before they bring it back in, they just need to do A, B, C, D, and E and that type of stuff. Okay. Uh, the problem, and I'm sure Daniel touched on it, the problem is that once it gets, you know, it, it's always there. If it gets to, you just, you put a deer, destroy it, you know, say, hey, oh gosh. It's yeah, a, he uh, said that. C, yeah. F, D, you know, then, then, then it's there forever. And uh, so, and like Daniel said, you know, we're in the we we're in the prevention, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. uh, That's a good way to put it, yeah. you know, stage of it because and because Daniel, I know you can verify there is no cure for this. Oh, there is there no. there, there is no. not a cure, and, and the word you Ooh. said right there, prevention. That's what we're in right now, and I know a lot of hunters say, well, this is this makes a problem for me, or it's too much trouble. Well. What everybody needs to realize, as long as we're in prevention mode, we're okay. But once it's detected in Tennessee, we go into containment mode, and it will it will truly change the way deer hunting and deer management is in the state of Tennessee. In what way? Uh, what way? What ways you have? You know, if you have a hot zone where where you have a positive CWD case, mm-hmm. uh, we go in there, we set up a perimeter around it, and we're pretty much in eradication mode. Um, wow. Either the state sharpshooters, you kill every deer that's there. Wow. Uh, and you try to find out how far that disease has spread. It'll change seasons. It'll change bag limits. Um, I mean, it, it could be shooting all year long, uh, you know. So uh, I know uh, some of the studies that I was looking at in some of the northern states where they had 30 to 40 deer per square mile, when they went in and did the eradication, they were getting under 10 deer per square mile. Wow. Uh, and, uh, well, just you know, not- the, the, Daniel's made a good point. The thing to remember is this. It'll affect the hunter, the way he gets to hunt, or when he gets to hunt, Absolutely. and that's what they don't. That's it'll make them an inconvenience to them, okay? And they won't be able to get out there and go enjoy these nice, cool mornings like we've got, and uh, uh, and and hunt the deer that they've enjoyed hunting for a bunch of years. It comes in, then it changes the whole game for everybody, doesn't it, Daniel? It, it does, and then uh, if you have a hot zone, and if a deer's taken, that deer cannot leave that hot zone. So if you're a hunter from East Tennessee and you come over to Madison or Carroll County, where you have a hunting place and you want to take it venison back, you can't do that anymore. That deer has to, every part of that deer has to stay in that zone. This is scary, isn't it? I mean, uh, it is. Uh, this is this is no joke, folks out there. I mean, this and, uh, could determine and and the history. And you probably noticed, you know, over the outdoor press, over the outdoor yeah. wires, the last couple of weeks. Yeah, these states are starting to take it really, really serious. Yeah, you know, in Tennessee, you know, because when you look at wildlife in the state you know it's it's worth billions of dollars it sure is in tax revenue sales tax revenue yeah and i seen the other day alabama Mm -hmm. you know there's some guys and they were transporting live deer oh they were yeah yeah, Mm -hmm. you know we're talking three quarters of a million dollars oh i saw that seven hundred fifty thousand dollars yeah they were fine i'd like to come in and say hey honey yeah, guess, yeah. guess what I have to pay today. <laughs> yeah. You know? Alabama also has a, uh, you, it, re, even if you bring a deer in from Tennessee, uh, it has to be meet those requirements. Yeah. Uh, legally taken from Tennessee, still going to have to meet requirements, even though we don't have CW deer or anything like that. They have an importation rule on, on dead deer of any type from any state. So we're talking about from Memphis to to Roan Mountain, we got to yep. uh, be on alert for this, uh, especially since we're so close. Uh, well, to the other end of the state, you got Virginia beside us has got uh, positive CWD. Yeah, yeah. oh, they mm-hmm. do. Oh, yeah. man, uh, yes. what, what 22 states. Well, I wish we could go on and on. Guys, you were great to take time. Uh, thank you, uh, Brian, for sneaking in here with us, and uh, Daniel, too. And, folks, uh, I'm going to post a lot of this information on LROutdoors.com. Go to TNWildlife.org. We're getting ready to hit the muzzleloading season really close. Uh, All of us have been out in the fields. We know the acorns are wonderful this year, and and walnuts are really big, too, I could talk about. (laughs) We'll talk about that later. But thanks, guys. Y'all have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, buddy. All right, let's take a break. Okay, I'll be careful out there. Let's take a break on Outdoors with Larry Ray. Be right back. You can find out. 